food restriction versus no food restriction. Sicko versus keto versus Mediterranean versus paleo pescatarian with sicko in general right that school of thought count macros count calories design your diet program based off of that alone keto keeping your carbs under a certain amount so you reach a state of ketosis pescatarian all right fish veggies fruit Paleo, right? Prehistoric diet, as I call it. And um, in general, you get it, right? Restrictive diets where you eliminate certain foods versus sicko where you reduce calories, you reduce macros so that you go into an energy deficit. Those are the two schools of thought. Reduce calories and macros or reduce types of foods. Which one is right? Which one is the one for you? Which one is the one for me? Is one right and one wrong? Or is there a time and place for everything? Is each person different sicko does not just in this raw form right does not address issues or relationship with food it pretty much ignores biochemistry except for the general population right so so sicko addresses the general population whereas keto says hey I might have an issue with carbs, right? And even Mediterranean diet, this diet that they're pushing now says, hey, I might have an issue with certain types of foods. Let me stick to this diet where I think it's the actual human diet, even carnivore diet, right? There's one um, great YouTuber who says, the carnivore diet is the proper human diet, right? Um, but is food restriction sustainable? I'm not sure. It, it is if the person wants it. Is sicko sustainable? I think sicko is most certainly sustainable. It's just a matter of doing your math and committing to sticking to the math. Both are or are both sustainable depending on the individual, right? So does sicko work for some, but maybe not a restrictive food diet? Does a restrictive food diet work for some but not sicko? Does it does the individual matter? Is this a personality thing? A biochemistry thing? Or is there a one size fits all? Do we really have to be extremist? You should do things this way. Do things that way. Do we suffer from an issue where we want everyone to do the same thing we're doing? Hey, you. Do intermittent fasting. Hey, you. Do keto diet. This is what works. Nothing else works. This works. Why are we like that? Is that just humanity? What's wrong with testing the waters and saying, maybe this is my issue. Let me try and see if this will fix me. Is there anything wrong with failing 20 diets? What's the consequences of failure? Are there consequences to failure? Really? Long term? Why take a dogmatic approach to a diet, to a fast, 
to fasting. No one has created a cure for obesity. No one has the cure. There is no cure. It's a thing that we are actively dealing with. And it's getting worse in our society, isn't it? They can do research and experiments on all the mice they want. It does not address the human. Why do we take research that was done on mice and say, aha, this is it. Why would we look and evaluate research? Don't we? Why don't we look at who sponsored the research? Was it the food industry? Is the food industry actually the problem? It's nice that this processed food and delicious food exists, isn't it? Is it their fault that we buy it? Can we blame them for going so aggressive, trying to increase their profits in marketing? They just trying to feed their family, right? <laughs> Everyone has their own idea of the American dream. A boss is responsible for making sure everyone on his team eats. Imagine you have a corporation with 50,000 employees, 10,000 employees. Who's to blame? Is there anyone to blame? Shouldn't we take individual responsibility and evaluate what works for us? Isn't it okay to say what works for you might not work for me? And isn't it okay to say what works for you might work for me? Do we have to be so extreme in our thoughts and say, this is it. This is what it has to be for you. How come doctors are not trained on obesity when obesity affects so many people? I should have said they're not trained on obesity. How come they're not trained on things like food addiction? How come food addiction isn't acknowledged by the DSM-5 or whatever they call that thing? Like, why won't they accept that food addiction exists? They acknowledge binge eating now. Why not food addiction? Is it because of the industry, the lobbyists of the food industry, the money in the pockets? You know what they say? Well, let me say here. He who sponsors the research gets the research done, you know. So if I'm the food industry, I'm making billions of dollars. I'm going to sponsor food research that says, hey, sugar is not so bad. Hey, processed food is not so bad. Hey, FDA approved this chemical. It's not so bad. We tested it on thousands of mice. <laughs> is this one big conspiracy theory? Or should we just accept that we all have a limited time on this earth and just enjoy life while we're here, however we see fit, as long as it's not at a detriment to others? Is it okay to lose weight, gain it back, lose weight, gain it back, lose weight, gain it back? Should you be ashamed about it when everyone goes through it? Should we feel shame for obesity? Is it okay to fat shame? Is it okay to do the opposite of fat shame? Where we uplift people that are obese, super obese, morbidly obese. We uplift them and tell them that they're beautiful as they are. Is that the right thing to do? Is it a bad thing to fat shame? Is it the right thing to fat shame? Is it anyone's business? If it's no one's business, why can we see it? You know, someone can have cancer, you can't see it. Someone's obese, you see it. That's my Jadakiss version of why. 